come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Welcome to the fear you can hear. Welcome to the sounds of suspense, to the terrifying world of your own imagination. And I hope you won't hold it against us if we scare you a little with a tale that really could happen, I suppose. But when you hear the outcome, you'll hope it never does. Consider the case of Paula Richards, age 24, who put her future in the hands of an old fortune teller and dealer in the macabre. But one thing I must add about our arrangement. Yes? On the birth of the child, I will demand one favor. You must promise to grant it. A favor? What? I shall ask it when the child is born. <sighs> but I can't promise that when I don't know what it is. It's a very small favor, but it is part of the bargain. And believe me, Mrs. Richards, if you do decide to bargain with me, I warn you to be ready to keep your part of it. Our mystery drama, Mother Love, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Bob Juran and stars Joan Hackett. A doctor's waiting room is not the most pleasant place to spend a winter morning. And for Paula and George Richards, this morning is a very fateful one. What's taking him so long? Easy, honey. Dr. Morton has other patients, sick patients. Why can't Dr. Morton say yes or no? Why does he have to keep us waiting? He wanted to see us together in person. I understand how he feels. I'm going to call Mr. Jordan. I'll tell him I won't be in today. I told him I'd be late, but I'm... I'm just no good for work today. I'm sure the doctor won't mind my using his phone. Jordan Electric. Oh, Mr. Jordan, I didn't expect you to answer. Oh, Millie's out sick. What's the verdict, Paula? Uh, I don't know yet. That's why I'm calling. I'm just... I'm too upset to come in today. Is it all right? Sure, sure, I understand. The books can wait another day. No audit till the end of the quarter, anyway. Thank you. What's the holdup? The doctor's busy. We're next. Courage up, Paula. I've got my fingers crossed for you. Thanks, Mr. Jordan. Goodbye. Bye, Paula. He didn't mind, did he? No, no, he didn't. He said if I wanted... Mrs. Richards, Mr. Richards. Hello, Doc. Oh, thank heavens. Will you step inside, please? Come right in. Take those chairs by the desk. Thank you. I'm sorry you had to wait. Doctor, I'd like... I know, Miss Richards, you're anxious about the tests. Oh, you have no idea. Easy, honey. I'll come right to the point. I think that's what you want. Yes. Please, doctor. All right. I can't sweet-talk my way through to make it easier for you. The results are negative. I'm sorry, Mrs. Richards, but from my examination, Dr. Field's examination, and the lab tests, you simply cannot ever hope to bear a child. Oh, George. It's certain, then? Absolutely certain. Yes, it is. Would artificial... No. The trouble lies with Mrs. Richards. <laughs> She's physically incapable of conceiving or bearing a child. I was, I was trying to prepare for this, but it sort of hits you right between the eyes. Take me home, George, please. <laughs> I hate to leave you alone today, but I have to get to the studio. It's all right, George. You know that I'm I'm not going to love you any the less, Paula. Darling, I just wanted to give you a son. So it's not in our cards. We have each other. That's the main reason we got married, to be together. A baby would have been... Extra icing on the cake. Don't stop loving me, George. Please. Please, George. Don't stop loving me. I told you I won't, honey. And I meant it. You'll be okay today? 
I'll be okay. I won't be singing around the apartment, but I... I won't be jumping out the window either. I hate like the devil to leave you, honey, but I'm due on the air with the new news. I'll be all right. See you at seven. <laughs> What's the news? I've been dying for your call all morning. Edna, would you have lunch with me today? I know our date isn't until Friday, and I know that it's snowing awful hard, but oh, if you could just... Of course I'll have lunch, but... But get me down off the ceiling. What did the doctor say? I'll meet you at the towers. One o'clock? Oh, of course. Paula, what's happened? Bad news? Yes, bad news. <laughs> Oh, I, I can imagine how tough it is for you, Paula. No, you can't. I'm going to lose George. Did he say that? No, just the opposite, but... Oh, Edna, I know. I have a feeling. Oh, now, Paula, honey, don't start planning your own downfall. I'm afraid it's all planned. It's, it's all in the cards. In the cards? Yes, you know, it's just an expression. Well... Honey, I don't know whether I should suggest this. What? Well, you're just mentioning cards. It it seems sort of frivolous at a time like this, but... Well, there's a woman down in the East Village. She tells fortunes, you know, with cards and tea leaves. <laughs> and what could you do for me? Tell me what I already know. Well, this woman specializes in herbs. She calls herself Mother Love. <laughs> Mother Love? Well, now, mind you, I'm, I'm, I'm just suggesting, but maybe, just maybe, this woman could help you. How? Sometimes these old crones can read things in the future. Maybe a baby is in the cards for you. After the doctor said that well, there wasn't... Well, it's just an idea. Well, how do you... How do you know this Mother Love? Oh, quite by accident. About oh, six months ago, Henry and, well, maybe it was Ed, I... Anyway, it was the current one at the time. We were bar hopping in the village when we came on this fantastic storefront. The window was painted green and purple with red curtains, and it said, Mother Love, in orange letters. <sighs> Fortunes told secret herb remedies. It seemed like a lark, so we went in. And all I remember from then on was mumbling and incense and being told, one, I'd never marry, two, that I was too fickle and flighty, and three, <laughs> that my mother had had a ward on her right thigh. Oh, and for you. darned if the old crone wasn't right about that, too. Edna, the idea that a fortune teller spell can help me have a baby is just nonsense. Well, looking at it in the cold light of day, you're right. Just a thought. Oh, something to say, I guess. Oh, honestly, Pa, I feel so uncomfortable. I mean, what, what do you say to someone in your predicament? Hello? Edna? Oh, hi, Paula. Edna? Look, last month you mentioned a woman in the village. She works with herbs. Uh, Mother Love? You... Oh, Polly, you don't mean you've been thinking seriously about that? Not until now, not really, but I'd... Look, I'd, I'd like to know how to find her. Well, I... I seem to remember it was on 8th Street. No, no, it was 9th. Yeah, 9th, near 1st. Well, that's about all I'm sure of. 9th near 1st. Paula, well, I wasn't really being serious last month. Well, I can't do any harm. Right now, I'm ready to grab at any straws. Well, when are you going? Saturday. Have you told George? No, he'd be furious. Do you want me to come with you? Would you? I'd feel a lot better. Now, Paula, let's, let's not go too far. Well, what does that mean? Well, we all laugh at fortune-telling and spells and brews, but... Sometimes when we want to believe, well, things happen. I'm going to this mother love because I... 
I want something to happen. Maybe she can't do anything to help me have a baby, but I'm going to try. Look, it was all your idea, Edna. I think it's at the end of this block. What a neighborhood. Mm. Makes my skin crawl. That's it. I see what you mean about those red curtains and orange letters. <laughs> Looks like a Coney Island transplant that failed. Mother, love, fortunes, toll, secret, herb remedies. Well, mother love, here I come. Good heavens. I never expected anything like this. Hmm. It's not what I remember. Oh, but then I'd been bar hopping. This rock, it must be worth a fortune. Edna, mm. look at the paintings. Mm. It's too much incense, though. Ah, Mother has company. Good morning, ladies. Come in. How can Mother serve you? Your fortunes, perhaps? Maybe an ailment? Well... Uh, uh, <clears throat> I would, uh, I'd like uh, to talk to you. It will cost you. Mother's time is expensive. Well, I'll pay. Are both of you? Oh, no, I'm, I'm just along for the ride. Come then. We'll go into my studio. Edna, I'll be here. This way, my dear. Through the curtains. It's a little dark, but I like it that way. Mother, is that you? Mother? Of course, Claude. Mother, is that you? Don't be alarmed. He's harmless. He's my son. What's the matter with him? He's blind and feeble-minded. Oh, I'm so sorry. Come, sit down at the table. What will it be? Cards, tea leaves, crystal ball? Uh, no. I I'm more interested in uh, herbs, I think. What is it you want? I want to have a baby. I was told that you might be able to help. Who told you I can do things like that? A, a, a friend? That one out there? Uh, no, 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 someone else. Mother, is that you? Yes, Claude. Everything's all right. I tell fortunes. I give herbs for minor complaints. I do not deal in that sort of thing. Is there a herb that might help me? Of course not. Not without... A spell. Forget it. I've said too much already. Mother love, I want desperately to have a child. The doctor says that I can't. The problem is my fault. I'll try anything, even if a spell is necessary. It would be expensive. I don't care. There may be a way to help you have a normal baby with your own husband. Please, that's all I want. It will cost you $1,000. I have that. Plus another 5,000 when you have conceived. 5,000? I said it would be expensive, and I guarantee nothing. With these things, we can only try. Will you tell me one thing? Perhaps, perhaps not. Have you ever done this, or this sort of thing before? I... Cannot answer that. Quite a gamble for Paula. Six thousand dollars and no guarantee. A long shot if there ever was one. Will she take the gamble? Is she desperate enough? We'll soon see. I'll be back shortly with Act Two. Welcome again to the studio of Mother Love in a dingy part of New York City. A strange and eerie place where strange things are said to happen. Let's see if they do, as Paula Richards considers a bargain 
a bargain for a baby. I'll, I'll have to think this over. I admit that I am desperate, but I'll just have to think about it. It's for you to decide, of course. Mother, who's there? Who I, is that? Hush, hush, Claude. I'll be with you in a moment. I'm sorry, he's very ill. Thank you. Anyway, I'll, I'll be in touch with you if I decide that... You'll be in touch. Yes. Claude, what's the matter now? Mother's here. Mother is always here. Well, I thought you'd never come out. What happened? Let's get out of here. She really said that? Well, she said she doesn't guarantee anything. Paula, now listen to me. Forget it. She's a fraud and you know it. Well, you can't throw away $6,000 on a phony fortune teller. But if she could possibly... Oh, what? You'll have to tell George about oh, this. Oh, heavens, no, 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 no. I, what, he'd think I... Uh, he'd think I was completely crazy. You know, I'm sorry I ever brought this up. Don't be, Edna. Look, I won't lose my head. Well, now, where would you get the money anyway without telling George? Well, I have $1,000 and a personal account. It's, it's all that's left of my father's inheritance. I'll worry about the rest later. Ah, Mother has company. Ah, it's you. I have the thousand. I want to try. Come in, come in. This way. I thought you'd be back. Mother love knows. Mother... Is that you? You... you have the money. Here, in cash. Good. I need it. For Claude. He needs medicine so badly. Poor Claude cost me so much. Are you sure you want a child? I want a baby. Get on with whatever you have to do. Yes, of course. Excuse me, I have to get some things. I had them already. I knew you'd be back. Now, first of all, this talisman. You must wear it around your waist. This package contains herbs. A special combination to relax you. That's the secret. To relax. Half a teaspoon and a cup of boiling water once a day. In the morning is best. That's all. For now. But one thing I must add about our arrangement. Yes? On the birth of the child, I will ask you one favor. You must promise to grant it. A favor? But what? I shall ask it when the child is born. But I can't promise that when I don't know what it is. It's a very small favor. Don't worry. But it's part of the bargain. Very well, it's a long way off. Yes, it is. Take the talisman and the herbs. And don't be alarmed if certain unusual things happen in the next few weeks. Unusual things? What kind of things? You'll understand. You'll recognize them. They will mean things are working. Have you told your husband about this? No. Good, good. Tell no one. No one. Now, the last thing I must have is your name. Paula Richards. Your husband? George Richards. Go now. And beware. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll be in touch with you. Yes. Five thousand. Remember when you conceive. Mother! Who, who's there? Who, who's there? Lord! Mother is here now. Only mother. See, Claude? A thousand dollars from the nice lady. The lady who's going to help us. You're going to get better, Claude. You won't be sick anymore. The lady is going to help us. 
Isn't that nice, Claude? Paula? Mm-hmm? Penny for your thoughts. Oh, I wasn't thinking of anything, really. You've been like that a lot lately. Distant. I'm surprised you noticed. Look, honey, I know I haven't been a Lily to live with either. I mean, we, we've let our problem be too important. We're both disappointed, but we can't change the situation. I mean, we have to adjust to it. Sorry if I've been a pill, if I've done anything to make you so... so... Edgy. <laughs> That's your word. Is that how you feel? I guess. George, let's go to the show tonight. We haven't been out in weeks. I'd like that, Paul. I'd really like that. I, I've had uh, <clears throat> a lot on my mind, and you're right. I, I've been thinking about myself too much. I'll see what I can get tickets for. Look at the time. I've got to shower and run. Hey, will you look at that? What is it? It's a bird. At the window, I think I think it's a crow. No, crows are bigger. A blackbird? I... No, I don't know. I thought they all went south for the winter. It looks awfully cold. Well, don't invite it in. They know how to take care of themselves. I'll see you tonight, honey. Bye, George. I'll call you at the office about the tickets for tonight. Okay. Shoo. Go away. Shoo. Oh, well, a few crumbs. Then I've got to get to work. You look so cold. Now, here. Here's some bread. <gasps> Get out! Get out! What am I going to do? Oh, get off the floor, Lamb! Get out! Get out! Oh, Lord! What? Oh, what am I going to do? Get out! Shoot! Oh, good. Go away! Shh. Hello, Mrs. Jensen? Is Mr. Jensen there? This is Mrs. Richards in 3A. No, no, no! It's not about the heat. It's about a bird in my apartment. I can't get it out. Well, I thought that Mr. Jensen might. Oh, no, I've got to get to work. All right. Uh, I'll leave. Uh, he can get in with a passkey. Maybe the bird will just fly out. And I'll leave the window open a little. Yes. Yes, all right. Thank you. Bye. Stop following me. Get out! Oh, what am I going to get, to, to get rid of you? I... You wanted to see me, Mr. Jordan? Yes. Uh, sit down, Paula. How are you feeling? Why? Well, I, I know you've had a personal disappointment. You've been under a strain. You don't have to say it, Mr. Jordan. I know that my work has just been rotten lately, and I'm I'm just all on edge. And today there is a there is a bird in my apartment. A bird? Tapped on the window this morning and stupid me opened the window and gave it some crumbs. What kind of bird? I don't know. It's black and shiny. Not too big. I asked the superintendent to get it out. It's so unnerving. Well, I can imagine. I'm sorry about the work, Mr. Jordan. I know I've been letting you down. No, well, I'm, I'm sure it's just a passing thing. Your work has always been tops, Paula. But the books are important. And with the auditors coming in next month, well, everything just has to be in order. I know, Mr. Jordan, and I'll... I promise I'll straighten up. Yes? Yes, she's here. It's a call for you. Oh, it must be George about tonight. Hello? Mrs. Uh, Richards? You know who this is? Yes, I know. Tell me, Mrs. Richards, has the visitor arrived yet? The visitor? You'll know. You'll know when the visitor arrives. Uh, you told me the bird. Good, good. He has arrived. It's working. Yes, it's working, Mrs. Richards. Oh. Don't neglect the tea now, whatever you do. And take care of the visitor. It is most important. I'll be in touch with you again. Very soon. Oh, Paula, is it... Is it trouble? You're white as a ghost. No, no, no trouble at all. That is, 
I don't know. Well, you mentioned the bird. Is that it? Oh, uh, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, the superintendent got it out. Oh, good, good. Then, then there's nothing to worry about. Hey, honey, I'm home. Paula? D don't touch it, George. What? Just let it alone. Oh. Oh. Good oh. grief. Oh. How did it get in? Look, I... I let it in by accident. It won't leave. I'll get it to leave. No, 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 George. Don't, don't, don't go near it, please. Paula, we are not going to live with that in the house. It, it has a broken leg. I, I was thinking of getting a, a cage for it. You can't cage a wild bird, and I'm not going to sit around with one beady eye staring at me like that. George, don't touch it, please. Just, just go along with me. Oh, Paula, a pet is one thing, but this... I, 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 I have to take care of it. Why, why, why a wild bird? I, you know, I, I can't stand the way it stares at me. It stares at me, too. We'll just get used to it. Now, well, this gives me the woolies. I'll get dinner. You have to be back at the studio at nine, don't you? Yeah, I'm sorry about our theater date, but with Pete's wife in the delivery room, I've got to cover the evening news. Of course, Pete shouldn't be anywhere else when the baby is born. Do you want French fries or boiled potatoes? Whatever's fastest. So you found a home, did you? Well, I'm not in favor of it, but it looks like you're part of the family. Paula, come in, come in. I haven't seen you, why, since your father's funeral almost three years. It was nice of you to see me, Mr. Martin. And why wouldn't I? I'm only sorry I wasn't more attentive to you after your father passed away. Fred and I were good friends. I've missed him. Thank you. So have I. I, uh... I'm here to ask a favor. Of course, Paula. <sighs> Mr. Martin. Would you lend me $5,000? No questions asked. Five thousand? All right. Are you in some kind of trouble, Paula? No questions? Oh, yes, of course. You wouldn't ask me if you didn't need it badly. I will, Paula. I don't have that much on hand. Suppose I send you a check. Oh, uh, thank you. Thank you so much. I don't need it immediately. Any time in the next few weeks will just be fine. You'll have it in a few days. I promise you, I will pay you back. Oh, I'm not worried about that. Hello? Mrs. Richards? Oh, yes, it's you. Things are ready. You'll be needing the 5000 very soon. I I've arranged that. Good, good. How is the visitor? Still there? It must be there. It is. Good. Good. Five thousand dollars, Claude. Paula? The lady will give us five thousand dollars. Mother? You'll be going to get better, Claude. You'll be able to see again. Your legs won't hurt. Mother. Mother has to leave you for a while. But don't worry, Claude. We'll be together soon with $5,000. Everything will be all right. I promise you. Everything will be all right for Mother Love and Claude, and presumably Paula. But when we tamper with the unknown, the results can be very unexpected. I'll return shortly with Act Three. Let's return now to the plight of Paula and George Richards. You'll remember that Mother Love told Claude everything would be all right. But things are not quite so right for George. In fact, things for George are getting downright impossible. 
Well, I am not going to bed another night with the bird on the dresser. It's been there every night for two weeks. All it does is sleep. You've got to admit he hasn't been in any trouble. I still don't like the look in his eye. The way it hobbles with that broken leg, it's... I mean, it's grotesque. Turn out the light, George. You won't see it then. Oh, oh, oh boy. I never thought I'd be sharing my bedroom with a bird. Good night, darling. What's the matter with that thing? I don't know. It never acted that way before. Keeps that up. I'm going to shoot it. Good night, George. Good night, Paula. Uh, uh, Paula! Uh, Paula, uh, what is it? Uh, Paula! Uh, it's pain! Pain in my oh, stomach! Wait a minute, get the light. Uh, yeah. I, I can't wait. I'll call Dr. Morton. No! Wait, wait! Oh, what's the matter with What is the matter with the bird? The devil take the bird. I'm concerned uh, about you. It's my stomach. What time is it? Uh, it's it's, it's 4.30. I'm calling Dr. Morton. Uh, no, don't. No, no, not yet. It not. might be appendicitis. No, no, no. It, it, not, it's not that. I'm going to kill that bird if it doesn't shut up. Uh, 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 look, I, I'll, I'll be all right. I, I, I'll be all right. I'll see. Uh, God, I'll... I'll see Dr. Morton in the mo morning. George? Yes, honey. What time is it? Seven o'clock. I fell asleep. After the pain seemed to stop. Oh, the pain. I'm so much better now. Well, we're going to see Dr. Morton just as soon as you feel well enough to get up. No, I'll, I'll be all right. I'll just stay home. I don't want to see Dr. Morton today. Paula, you can't let it go. It might be something serious. I promise I'll see him when... when it is necessary. I, I just... I want to stay in bed today. I'm going to call him and tell him about it after I make us some coffee. All right. I'm going to wash. I'll call Mr. Jordan also and tell him that you won't be in today. He isn't going to like that. Paula... What? Come in here. What's the matter? You sound so... I didn't do it, Paul. I know I threatened to, but I swear I didn't. I never gave the bird another thought after that pain itch. I never touched it. Oh, George, it's all crumpled up. It's dead, Paul. The bird is dead. Ah! How long ago was this attack? A little over a month ago, Dr. Morton. Why didn't you see me right away? Well, I wanted to be sure. Well, Paula, there are some preliminary signs similar to pregnancy. That's what I thought. I, I knew it would be. Don't get your hopes up yet, Paula. I told you about the impossibility of your... I know, I know, but I think that... And I said these symptoms are similar to pregnancy. They could be caused by something else. I'd like to run a few more tests. All right, anything that you say, but this time they're going to be positive. I know, Dr. Morton, I just know. A woman knows when life has started within her. Hello? Mrs. Richards, I thought I'd be seeing you by now. Oh, yes, well, uh, the doctor hasn't confirmed it yet, but I... I... But we know, don't we? Yes. The second part of our bargain is due, Mrs. Richards. Five thousand dollars. And after what we've already been through, I think you know I mean what I say. Yes, I do. Good. Good. I'll be expecting you, Mrs. Richards. I promise I'll keep my end of the bargain. I told you I arranged for the money. It just hasn't come in yet. I'll, I'll check on it today. Good, good. I'll be seeing you soon, then. Yes, I promise. I hope so. I hope so, Mrs. Richards. You know what I can do. Hello? Hello, may I speak to Mr. Morton, please? No, no, Mr. S Mr. Morton Sr. Yeah. What? God, where? 
happen? Well, he can't be dead. He just can't be dead. You... Well, listen, do you know if he sent... Oh, no, no, you wouldn't know that. What am I going to do? Oh, dear God. No, 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 I don't want to speak to anyone else. I... I expected you sooner. I'm sorry. I, I had to turn to another source for the money. It doesn't matter. You're here with it now? Uh, it's all there. Good, good. We're almost even then, eh? I hope so. You don't sound grateful, Mrs. Richards. You wanted a child and you are pregnant. You should be grateful. I have lost my son. Oh, I... I'm so sorry. Claude is dead. But he was so ill, perhaps it's better. Part of this will pay for the funeral. The rest... is for the future. I really m must go now. Of course. Go. And good fortune. You won't need the amulet anymore. Save it as a souvenir. And I'll be seeing you when the baby is born. Paula, George, sit down. Well, I'm sure glad Paul has finally decided to have you check on those stomach pains, Dr. Morton. When I examined her last week... Last week? I didn't tell you, George. I wanted to be sure first. Sure what? I'm going to have a baby. What? That's right, George. I wanted to see you both about the results, the tests. It's almost impossible for me to believe, but it's conclusive. Paula is pregnant. I wanted it so much for you, George. What? You said that Paula could never conceive or bear a child. I did, but Paula proved us wrong. <laughs> Believe me, many things happen to prove us wrong now and then. You're happy, George? Happy? Oh, Paula, now I know why you've been so irritable and distant. You know, I feel like I'm getting my wife back along with a baby. Well, I want to see you every two weeks. We usually make it a monthly visit, but you're an unusual case. A very wonderful case. I wish you both much happiness. You wanted to see me, Mr. Jordan? Yes, yes, Paula. How are you feeling? <laughs> I think full is the word. Uh, when is the big day? The end of August. It's only three months. I'm I'm going to spend an uncomfortable summer. It, uh, it looks that way. I, I don't know any way of saying this, Paula, other than just coming right out with it. You know we were audited last month at the end of the quarter. Yes. The auditors found a shortage of $5,000. I'll have to have an explanation. Yes, I suppose you will. Now, I know there must be a reason, Paula. You've worked for me for five years. Never a mistake. I'm going to tell you the truth. I just hope that you can believe it. Why shouldn't I? I simply couldn't get the money anywhere. I, I haven't told George, but we'll pay it back. Look, I promise you. I hope so. But I'll go along with that. Thank you, Mr. Jordan. Right now, the baby's the important thing. George, it's time. I know it. I'll get Dr. Morton. I'll get the suitcase. Congratulations, Dad. Everything's all right. Paula? Paula's fine. Boy or girl? Only the mother can tell you that. Go on in. Paula, honey. George, isn't he beautiful? I've already named him George Jr. I hope you don't mind. Mind? Oh, no. Honey, honey, honey. More champagne, Ed? Silly question. A toast to the godmother. Here, here. Oh, you two. You know you're going to make a grown woman cry. To Edna... And to little George. Oh, I'm so happy for both of you. And you don't know how relieved I am. Relieved? Oh, oh, 
Uh, well, what I mean is, yeah, I, I think that Edna means that she's relieved she doesn't have to listen to my troubles at lunch anymore. From now on, everything's roses. I've got it. Hello? Yes, it's for you, honey. Hello? Hello, Mrs. Richards. Congratulations on your new son. Well, how did you... <sighs> Thank you. It's time now for the favor. The last part of our bargain. Yes, I suppose it is. Good, good. I'll see you here in my studio tomorrow. With the baby. Just to see him? That's all. Just to see him. All right. Good. Good. Come in. Come in. I don't want to seem rude, but I'd like to get this over with just as quickly as possible. Come. Let me hold him. Ah, there we are. What a fine, healthy boy. Aren't you, Claude? Such a fine, strong legs now. They don't hurt anymore, do they, Claude? Give me back the baby. Mother told you everything would be all right, Claude. Mother, is that you? Is that you, Mother? Yes, Claude. Oh, my God. My God, what is, what is it? Mother told you that you'd be away for a little while. But now we're together again, and you won't be sick anymore, Lord. Oh, God. You have a fine new body now, and we'll take better care of it than we did with the last one. Mother will see to that, Claude. Mother will see to it. So, little George, or little Claude, whichever you prefer, seems to have more than his share of mothers. Perhaps Paula and Mother Love will share the raising of the child. But whatever they do, I hope that you, if you're ever tempted to deal in spells, will remember some age-old advice and follow it. Caveat emptor. Let the buyer beware. I'll be back shortly. Ah, sweet mystery, magic, mysticism. These are the ingredients we mix well, chill, and serve nightly on Radio Mystery Theater. Come and enjoy our hospitality again when malice heads the menu and menace is our mead. Our cast included Joan Hackett, Bennett Carroll, Mason Adams, Leon Janney, Evie Juster, and Roger DeCoven. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time... Pleasant dreams. <laughs>